going to invite Nadine Thomas to come up and <laughs> parents, 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 remember, remember what we said at the beginning. For all the time we had, there are memories, good and bad. Some things you can't remember, but some unforgettable. Some things you regret, but others unregrettable. The golden sun and the sea so blue, attending Titchfield High School was a dream come true. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, the Speaker, Dr. Honorable Linville Bloomfield, representatives of the Ministry of Education, Board of Governors, Principal, Vice Principals, Administrative Staff, Parents, Guardians, Students, Relatives, Friends, my fellow graduates, a pleasant afternoon to you all. Neither the penetrating sun bothered us, nor the airtight devotion, neither the overcrowded classrooms, not even the deficient in fans. All that matter was the grand opportunity to attend the most prestigious, the undebatably best high school, and the privilege to be adorned in navy blue skirts with sharp knife pleats and two diagonals that intersect at our center back. That was accompanied by a white duck and cotton blouse enclosed by five flat buttons, or the striking gold and blue epaulets that have been synonymous with the Titchfield High School. We were now a part of the Titchfield High School, a school that defines the acronym TITCH, talent, integrity, trust, capability, and hard work. Attending Titchfield High School was like biting a succulent piece of chicken egg while watching others feasting on thinly artful green bananas in pretense that is spicy. But the difference is our moment lasted much longer. It was five years of biting. My graduates and I encountered a wide range of personalities displayed by both teachers and classmates. Finding the right groups of friends was like Sudoku. Peers of nervous eyes scanned the classroom of strange faces, hoping that someone would glance back. But as they do, my graduates and I would turn away shyly. Among those, we met the beloved Mr. Campbell, a knowledgeable Christian. I am your army teacher. My name is V A S S E O C O M P D E L L. Bossy Piambo, Bossy Piambo, Ibelod, wiping his face with his handkerchief. He was a good teacher, one that contributed to our excellent religious education grades. A humble man that loved God, but hated provocation. Once a boy shouted across the classroom, Sam, you can't go use the bathroom. No, you're not getting the test. He answered, Mr. Campbell was exceptional. The teachers and students' personalities were not the only thing queer to us. We had difficulty trying to adjust in a new environment, especially when the students were plenty and the seats were scanty. The moving from class to class was new to most of us. No, not even Usain Bolt could beat the 100 meter dash from Portmore to the library, from Portmore to the home economics room, or from Portmore to the arts or TD room. And most first form academia were the callous remarks from the upper school boys as we sprinted to the classroom. But by eighth grade, we were able to adapt. However, it was during the summer that our adaptation was interrupted with the unfortunate news of the passing on of one of our classmates, Aaron Gardner. May his soul rest in peace. Portmore was a center of activities for us as first and second farmers. On a fair day, 
Portmore was engaged with social groups, but on a rainy day, poor Portmore. The activities were too much for it. The boys transformed to artists, and the girls transformed to dancers. And so were the walls of the classroom. They were transformed to drum. Music was played. But soon, all this had changed, as three golden strikes meant more than just its appearance. It was no time for us to act seriously. I am sure my graduates can vividly recall the religious education presentations, the creation of man, and the concept of sin and salvation. They were responsible for the comp complete segregation of the classes and the chaotic off-stage drama that took place. But in spite of that, we were able to accomplish good grades because greatness was bestowed upon us as teach fielders. Our journey was not yet complete. By 10th grade, we were placed in classes according to our career choices, namely the arts, business, and the sciences, and we were faced with our own challenges. Like ants trailing its way to a crumb of cheesecake, we trailed on to education. But yet again, the wide range of personalities and varying cultural background made it even more complicated. Our chemistry teacher was an intelligent Nigerian man, a chemistry genius named Mr. Okungai. His name gave us an imp, but his accent was far more than expected. So was his writing. As his writing danced across the whiteboard, so did his words on our eardrums. <laughs> Reverend Father Sedley Gooden was a spiritual man, a religious education teacher. But the tranquility of his voice made it difficult for us to keep up, especially after lunch. Nevertheless, his effort was remarkable, and our religious education grade supports me firmly on that. Titchfield High School stands on the foundation of many other marvelous teachers. Attorney at law, Monique Facey. Her magistrate, Miss Kim Smith. Superintendent, Jeffrey Thompson. Constable Oral Mackenzie. And Lieutenant Veron Henry, who got involved in many unfortunate incidents and worked laboriously to restore order especially when time was winding down on us and we needed to get recommended for our subjects. I Miss Cowell, Miss Hutchins, your hair look nice. <laughs> Were some of the tactics used to get recommendations. <laughs> but the harsh reality was only grades above 50% could place us there. So it was better we have saved our compliments for our parents in case we did not get recommended. Gracefully, we got our recommendations. Now with our recommendation, 11th grade was a time to score class, to extort 7th graders, to beat Beanie Man's trailer load and hang out with the most girls. That was for those who lacked the vision of success. But for us, it meant donating all our time energy and concentration on our studies as this was the most crucial year of secondary education. We were introduced to additional mathematics taught by an exceptional man. He was Titchfield He was Titchfield Albert Einstein. When my fellow graduates and I met him, we wondered what God's perfect man would be like. <laughs> there was no teaching it was It was this unbelievable compact to do. And absolutely no book to class. But his historical data, precise. His quoting of biblical scriptures, accurate. And his mathematical skills, superb. He was no other than Mr. Anderson. Such a brain attack bombarded us with atrocity. Our baggy eyes reddened like marijuana addicts. 
pack of unruly ants growled in our stomach. Oh, okay. What do I mean when you were saying on this scene? And information technology were the cancers of our pockets. My fellow graduates must agree that those SBAs were the nucleus of stress. We had to study because the full swing of, swing of examination crept upon us. After five years, success. We must prove to our parents, importantly to our teachers, and most vital to ourselves. CXC. It was two years of hard work, 24 months of concentration, 730 days of dedication. 17,520 hours of sacrifice, 1,051,200 minutes of time management, 63,072,000 seconds of planning, but a lifetime of success. I am a close by, by saying, since you have just tasted a piece of success, Stretch, reach out, put in your very best. Try hard, real hard, so you can have the rest.